Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine with you.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for this Lenten service comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, starting with the 12th verse. He writes, But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything and hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. The word of the Lord. For this Lenten service, we reflect on morning and evening blessings. This is a lesser known part of Luther's small catechism, and I'd like to read them to you and offer a few thoughts. Martin Luther writes, Now the head of the household is to teach the members of the household to say morning and evening blessings. The notes in the small catechism say, In the morning, as soon as you get out of bed, you are to make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, watch over me. Amen. Then the instructions go on. The kneeling or standing, say the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. If you wish, you may recite this little prayer as well. And the prayer goes like this. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. And I ask that you would also protect me today from sin and all evil, so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And then the note reads, After singing a hymn, or whatever else may serve your devotion, you are to go to your work joyfully. The evening blessing has this instruction. In the evening, when you go to bed, you are to make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, watch over me. Amen. And then the instructions continue. Then kneeling or standing, say the Apostles' Creed and Lord's Prayer. If you wish, you may recite this little prayer as well. And this is the evening blessing. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected me today. And I ask you to forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously to protect me tonight. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And the instructions conclude, Then you are to go to sleep quickly and cheerfully. This evening we have a conversation about daily practices in our spiritual life. Ways that we can connect with God throughout our day. Morning and evening prayers, prayers at your table, simply naming things you are thankful for to God. These are all different ways that we can connect to our Creator and have a sense that we are participating in what God is calling us to do throughout the day. The life of a Christian is just that. It is a life. It is a practice. It's something ongoing. It's not to be regulated to an hour in church or an hour in front of a service on a screen. It is the opportunity to see that God is with us and God's gifts for us are with us each and every day, wherever we may be. And sometimes we are those gifts for other people. Our prayer practices, our spiritual practices, the daily ways that we tap into that connection with God can help us be strong and prepared 
and ready and willing to be God's gifts to others throughout the day. So let us hear a conversation about morning and evening blessings and spiritual practices in the life of our education coordinator, Sheila Hankey, and in the life of her family. And as you hear this conversation, I invite you to reflect on what you have done as a spiritual practice in your family growing up, and perhaps what you are doing now or could do now into the future. Let's start the conversation. For this Wednesday evening service, we're going to have a conversation about morning and evening blessings, more particularly about family spiritual practices, practices that we do at our homes with our families that enrich us and that help guide us in our week. And so we have Sheila Hankey, our education coordinator here at Trinity. And would you be willing to share a little bit about yourself? Well, hello everyone. I can't wait for the day that I can actually talk to you in person rather than being on camera. <laughs> Maybe I'll start putting faces and names and voices together. Um, well, I am just recently here. I started this position at Thanksgiving time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I'm very excited to be doing this job because I, I, children have been, so, when I left the museum world, I turned to children, probably because I had my son and that was my new focus. Um, prior to doing education, I spent myself in the museum world. I s interned at the Smithsonian. I tr uh, did my in, um, secondary graduate at internship at the National Museum of Prague. Right. And I have spent the last years working with things that people have created with their hands. Um, in textiles and bringing them back to life. And now I feel like I am bringing children to life by enriching their minds and helping them grow and learn. Very so good. That's, and if you know, I currently live in Austin, Minnesota, and my husband's family is here from Blue Earth, and that's our strong connection to this area. Okay, very good. And uh, how does s spiritual practices or kind of having a morning evening blessings or reflections or prayers um, show up in your life and with your life with your family actually well, i i took a long time to think about the answer to that and i was actually really surprised at the results so thank you for asking that question um, i listed out everything that we did and i was amazed because we have a, a practice for morning day dinner and evening so it kind of stretches out through the whole thing, but it connects us to God every point of the day. Uh, in the morning, we do a slow stretch and deep breath work, and then we uh, say a, a little prayer that says to dear Heavenly Father to thank you for this day. Thank you for giving, us, for giving our mistakes that we're going to make today. And that it kind of reminds us that we have hope for the day. We have a clean slate. It doesn't matter if things go wrong because we are always forgiven. And then when my son was little, he's seven now, um, I wanted him to notice the good things that were given to him. Because we all have bad days and we can let that run around in our mind, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm probably people thought I was a little bit crazy too because I would point out think, oh isn't that sky beautiful blue do you hear the birds singing isn't that lovely God has given us song outside even when we're outside walking in our nature taking our nature walk um, so he knows enough now to look around and see God in everything that we do um, from looking out our back windows to when we walk we play and I think that is something I'm very proud of. And it helps me to remind mm -hmm. myself that there is so much given to us if we just open our eyes. And then at dinner table, we have this little practice. And thank you to Trinity Lutheran Church because we took Rachel's class, um, Cooking with Jesus, and we got a, one of those little prayer cubes. Yep. Yep. And we decided we wanted my son to have a big voice at the table. Because sometimes, you know, adults can overtalk children and not hear them. Um, so we let him roll and say the evening prayer now for yes. us. And he feels so important because, you know, that, that's his job. And he Very good. <laughs> yeah, Very good. So. And then we have this uh, thing that we do is called sweet, sour, and how do you help somebody? 
Mm -hmm. So he can tell something that was really good that happened to him and, and it connects us with what is really important to him and what was sour. But mm -hmm. we always did something that we could help, even if it was little, like uh, yesterday at the dinner table. Well, I, the trash was blowing over from Richard's, um, that's our neighbors. So he went outside and picked it up and put it back in the trash barrel. But that was a good thing. Yeah. And if we're reminded that we do good things every day, I think that also connects us more. Um, and then in the evening, we have this routine. Um, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to you my hopes and dreams to keep. Please take my fears and anxieties and make me strong. Lead me to where I belong. It gives us permission to release them to God. Take mm -hmm. away everything that is bothering us and to just restore us with sleep and good dreams. And we thank him every night for the love uh, and the warmth of our friends, of our family, and our tribe, people that really mean important to us. And then we say three quick gratitudes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, for me, it was last night, I, I, want, I heard my mom's voice on the phone. And since we can't see her, that means a lot to me. Yep. But it's those simple things, and it's amazing. It's just, it, it, it's that deep release that you just give everything over and it's gonna be mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So when you asked that question, I didn't realize we were doing all of it because it's integrated in our day. Mm -hmm. And when it's integrated, it doesn't take time, but it is taking a, the opportunity to create that experience every day. Yeah, and it's, it's part of your life versus this segment of time where we do this God thing and then the rest of the time, it, it's just part of who your family is. It's who our family is, yeah. Very good. And how about, um, how does that make a difference in your, your life and how it spills over to people around you or the community? Does it spill over into places outside of your family? I think it certainly does spill into it because it helps keep us aware of everything around us and, and what we are, our purpose of being. And that is to celebrate the life that we have been given. When we chose to live in Austin, um, we chose it because it was rural. It was close to family and it was diverse. And when we're given these opportunities to accept diversity, we accept that there's so much created that we can learn from mm -hmm. and people we can connect with that aren't like us in a mirror but they certainly enrich your life. And I knew that's, I had to celebrate that diversity for my son because he's gonna live in a diverse world, mm -hmm. far more diverse than what I live in. Mm -hmm. um, so we created my nonprofit where I taught and brought together the com different de ethnographic communities to teach programs to young children up to like age seven and there were cooking classes, there was uh, language classes, everything that um, makes individuals wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so as we're building those bridges into our communities and connecting each other, we, it, it was twofold because we're also welcoming people that are from Japan, South Korea, wherever they may come and find in Austin, they are welcome here and I want to take that practice of welcoming everybody, everybody is welcome, and make it a reality. And I thought, I knew, I absolutely knew I had achieved that goal for my son and myself when we had a party at our house and we had 15 moms there. None of them looked like us. The languages were so diverse. We had 11 different languages. We had different faiths represented there, but the one thing that connected all of us was being together as friends. Um, I think that's what God teaches me to do, to Very cool. build bridges in our community. And then the, the practices of kind of observing that you have in your family, you're, you're doing that in this nonprofit and mm -hmm. in all sorts of places. And, and there's wonderful gifts to observe. Yes. <laughs> and people to get to know. Teaches us to serve. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. cool. 
how about your your wonderings about either morning and evening prayer or about Holden was new to you. You shared that yes. you had not experienced Holden before and you actually did a little bit of research about Holden and Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. So what are your um wonderings or questions either about our topic this evening or or some things that you just kind of thought about with Holden? Um there was a lot of things that came out of Holden for me. Um it was a wonderful research project, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it got a chance for me to understand what Holden Service was about and how it is so enriched with the music and the arts. And I love that it uplifts. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes the music is undervalued and the art is undervalued in what they bring to our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really profoundly um, amazed that it was, a n I mean, contemporaneous to me, 1985. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, um, this being my first um, congregational family, I didn't realize that new things were added, <laughs> that the church <laughs> grew like that. You know, here was this one man in the darkness of winter bringing light and his music had such movement uh, I just like oh wow what a profound experience the Holden retreat is now on my bucket list I am going to go God. there and I'm going to experience that first hand <laughs> you, know? you would have lots of good company and I think that word uplifting is a really um, something that lots of people feel with the Holden evening prayer it's a, it's a tradition at Trinity and it's also uh, there's something very communal about it as a communal experience. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. How about um, either a hymn, scripture, religious art, or work that's important to you? What comes to mind when you're asked a question like that? I really thought about this question too. And the thing that really popped in my mind was a place in Gozo. We went there on the day of the feast and it was celebrating at the Lady of Our Nativity. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that this is a rural Gozo and you had to walk to get there from mm -hmm. the hotel. And it was in a medieval city, so it's surrounded by this wall on the outside. But when you walk up through the church, the inspiration that the people must have had to create something like that, mm -hmm. the talents of the people that they were given by God these beautiful gifts of art and music and, and science and architecture and community. Um, we went there and we saw the church lit up. There was this lights hanging up there in the background on a hill with a trail that you could see that the pil they had used as mm -hmm. part of their culture, the pilgrimage, was the three classes. And that was such a profound moment in my life. I, I, I think about it and it's so clear to me. Mm. And then to take that outside experience and when I walk in to that church and I saw the gilded ceilings, the paint and the hand carved pews, these, it was inspirational. It, it was just like the magnificence of God right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's something you could see and touch and take a picture of and yeah. It, it is yeah. an absolutely profound experience that, that that church had for me. I just- Very cool. And would you tell us again where Gorzo is for those that have geography like mine? <laughs> <laughs> Gorzo is a little island and it's shaped like a footprint in the Mediterranean. Okay. It's right off of Sicily and just to the north of Africa. Very in good. fact, if you stand on the ridge of Gozo, you can see the coastline of Africa. And how long has it been since you were there? 2010. 2010. Yes. Very good. And you would go back, it sounds like. Absolutely. <laughs> very, very good. Well, thank you so much for sharing about uh, your practices that you use with your family. Perhaps there's some here that those hearing this conversation might want to explore, even reflect on their own. Just even asking the question helps us raise awareness of what we want to have in our lives as part of being in touch with God through our whole day. And thank you for sharing. Um, your reflections on that church that meant so much to you as well. Well, so. thank you for asking because I grew a lot from your questions. Very so good. Very and much. that's the hope as we have conversations that we can grow as we hear what others have experienced. Yes. Very good. We're building those bridges and connecting, right? <laughs> very good.
the light shines in the darkness. And, and the, the darkness, darkness has not overcome it. it. Keep us from death. 
God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever mighty for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Lord. Thanks be to God. God. 